You probably recognize that there is a faster way to solve this question than setting them equal to each other. Of the hard and easy questions on the SAT, line falls under the easy question. But what's unique about these line questions is that if it's your first time here, my name is John. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 11 years. And this is literally all I've been doing ever since I graduated high school. And my specialty is taking a student who's currently in four, five, 600 range to 700 plus by their next SAT through SAT Math Accelerator, which is a six week online program. You can learn more about it in the pinned comment down below. So in this video, we're gonna quickly go over some things that you definitely need to understand about lines so that you can get more questions right and get a higher score on your next SAT. First, we're gonna go over the concept. I'm gonna show you how it works. And I'm gonna show you what these questions actually look like on the SAT. And lastly, we're gonna wrap it up by giving you a couple pointers on what you need to look out for for these questions so that you can get them right quickly and easily. So let's start with the first concept. You should have known this before you were even born, but we're just gonna quickly go over it. The most basic thing about lines is going to be the bone structure, which is known as the slope intercept form. Why equals mx plus b? We probably heard of it 100,000 times, but we just never understood it because you know, who cares about math, right? So here is a 10 second cliff note. Y equals mx plus b, if you think about a line, right? There's is going to be something that's known as the y intercept, which is where the graph intersects the y axis. And there's going to be a slope, which represents how slanted the line is. Graphically, it looks like this, but in an equation, your slope is going to be represented as M as shown over here, and your Y intercept is going to be represented as B, which is going to be right here. And you wanna have the ability to find out what M is and what B is based on two points that the SAT gives you. That's one of the core skills. So you're always gonna find the slope or M first. And how are you gonna do that? We're gonna use the slope formula, Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. If you plug the points in there, you find out what the slope is. So y2 is going to be one, y1 is going to be that. So it's going to be one minus eight, and then zero minus three. If you do that, you get minus eight over minus three, which means if you do that, you are going to get your slope as negative seven over negative three, which means your slope is going to be what? Just positive seven over three. That is going to be our answer. So if the question is simply asking you to find the slope, you simply use the slope formula. But what if the question looks something like this, where they give you two points right here, but you also have to find out the whole equation, not just the slope, but the whole y equals mx plus b form. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is plug everything into this equation over here and find out what your b value is. So for this question right here, we have y is equal to seven over three x plus b. And how do we find the b value? Well, plug in for x, plug in for y, b is the unknown variable. You simply solve for it. We have this point right here. We know this point is on this line, so we can simply plug it in. If it's on the line, that's what allows you to plug it in. So if we plug it in, it's gonna be eight is equal to, it's gonna be three right here, cancels out, seven plus B. We know that our B is equal to one. So what is our final structure going to be? It's going to be y is equal to the slope seven over three x plus the y intercept, which is going to be one right there, which means our answer is going to be choice A right there. Does that make sense? Main takeaway is you wanna have the ability to generate y equals mx plus b using the two coordinates provided by the question. Another pro tip here is that if you look at this question over here, you see that every single one of these answer choices have what? They have different slope, right? And whenever you see this, you need to recognize that, oh, I don't have to find out what the y-intercept is. If I can figure out what the slope is, which was seven over three in this case, I can just look at the answer choices and see which one has seven over three as the slope. And that way I can find the answer quickly. So you just gotta be quick on your feet and think on the spot, but that's an additional tip if you are paying attention. When it comes to line, we learned about y equals mx plus b and identifying a correct equation from the two coordinates, right? One more thing, the super basic thing you should have known before you were even born is how perpendicular lines work, right? So when two lines are perpendicular, that means it forms a 90 degrees at the intersection point. And when two lines are perpendicular, all you have to know is that your slope is going to be negative reciprocal and your y-intercept really doesn't matter. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We're looking for a equation of a graph where it is perpendicular to this line over here, right? So in order for it to be perpendicular, what needs to happen? The slope needs to be negative reciprocal. What's our slope right now? Our slope is seven over three. 
So if we apply the negative, it becomes negative seven over three. If we apply the reciprocal, it becomes negative three over seven. It just means to flip it. And which equation has negative three over seven as the slope? Only choice C. If you're wondering, John, what about the y-intercept? Well, when it comes to perpendicular lines, y-intercept really doesn't matter. Let's say we have a line right here that's perpendicular here, and then a line that's like perpendicular over here. The location of the y-intercept is irrelevant when it comes to perpendicular lines. So simply focus on the slope and you'll be good to go. So now that you have learned what you should have known 15 years ago, let's move on to the second concept, which is going to be the idea of point on the line. What does this mean? Well, let's say you have a question like this. Y is equal to 2X, right? And the question is wondering, is the coordinate 3, 4 on the line, right? How can you check whether this coordinate is on this graph or not? Well, let's graph this equation out and see if it's on it, right? So if you think about it, X, Y, we have 0, 1, 2, we're going to get 0, 2, 4, right? And if we graph this out, we're going to get here, 1, 2, and then 2, 4. It's going to roughly look something like this. And where is 3, 4 located? 3, 4 is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. But wait, let's pause for a second. Do you see how we came up with these coordinates that are on the line? The points that are on the line, how did we come up with them? We simply plugged in the X value and whatever the resulting Y value was, we plugged that point in, right? So in order for you to get the point on the line, you had to plug in the X value and the Y value and the equation had to be true. Does that make sense? Two and four is on the line because when we plug in two over there, we get four over here. We get four is equal to two times two. Our equation is true. That's what shows when you plug it in and when your equation is true, that's how you know that point is on the line. So coming back to the main question of three, four, how do we check if that point is on that line or not? You simply plug in the three and the four into the equation. Four is equal to two times three. Four is not equal to six. As a result, this coordinate is not on the line. So the second skill you need to have is for you to verify whether that coordinate is on the line or not. And you can do so by plugging it in. If the equation is true, it's on it. If it's not, it's not on it. So this is something you're gonna definitely see on the SAT. The question says, which of the following represents a line that contains the point four minus one, right? So we're given a bunch of equations and we have to identify the correct equation that contains the point four minus one, right? And five seconds ago, what did we learn? If the point is on the line, then the equation must be what? Equation must be true. So all we're gonna do is just plug in the coordinates and see which equation makes sense. So for the first one, if we plug it in, we're gonna get two times four plus three, that's gonna be eight plus three, that's not equal to one or minus one as the question tells us. So choice A is gonna be out, let's try choice B. One over two times four minus three is going to be two minus three, which is going to be minus one. So it checks out our answer is going to be choice B. The second skill you want to have for the SAT is your ability to verify whether that coordinate is on the line or not. If it is on the line, then your equation is going to be true when you plugged it in. And next, let's go over the last concept for lines, which is your ability to find the intersection between two lines. So guys, this concept not only applies to lines, but also to three, four different concepts on the SAT. If you don't know how to do this, you're leaving so many points on the table and you're just like, I don't know, you don't want to go to college. So pay attention for the next 30 seconds. So how do we find the intersection between two graphs, right? Well, let's think about it like this. Let's say you have two lines, y is equal to x plus one, and you have y is equal to minus x plus three, right? So x plus one is going to look something like this and minus x plus three is gonna look something like y intercept right there. It's gonna look something like that, right? Obviously we can see where the intersection is, but let's say you're working with more complicated graph and all you're given are these two equations. You're not given a graph, you can't even graph it and don't even think about putting in a graphing calculator because that's, that's just a waste of time. Anyways, if you are given two equations, how are we supposed to find the intersecting point, right? Well, the thing is, you have to understand this simple process. It's really simple. If you look at this intersecting point right there, it has a X, Y coordinate, right? And the thing is, at this intersecting point, both of the equations, both of these lines have the same Y value. Like we know that it's gonna be one and two, right? So for like demonstration purposes, we know that the Y value is here is going to be two, right? So we know that at this intersection point, your Y is going to be two and your Y is going to be two. And you see how x plus one is equal to two and x minus x plus three is also equal to two because they are equal to the same thing. 
That allows you to set these two equations equal to each other, which gives you x plus one is equal to minus x plus three. And now you only have one unknown variable, which allows you to solve for x, which comes out to two x is equal to two, x is equal to just positive one. So our intersection coordinate is going to be just simply one comma two. So long story short, main takeaway from this concept is that whenever you're looking for an intersection, well, at the intersection point, they're gonna have the same x and y value. And because they have the same y value, that allows us to set the x portion equal to each other. And because we only have one unknown variable now, like we did over here, and now that we have x, we can plug this into the equation and find out what the y value is. Make sense? I should probably add it here, set equal, and then you can plug it in, and then you can find out what the y coordinate is. This is a simple process. And whether it be a line or a parabola or a cubic function or whatever function you're working with, know that at the intersection, same x and y, which allows you to set the equations equal to each other. That's the main concept. And now let's see how this question shows up on the SAT. So we're given this two equations over here. We know that they are both going to be line because it's both x to the first, right? So if x, y is the solution to the system of equations above, what's the value of y, right? So if you guys remember from the functions video, which I'm gonna link in the top right corner right there, when it comes to two graphs and the question is talking about solution, we know that the solution is essentially referring to the intersection. It's the same thing. And because x, y is the solution, we know that x, y represents the intersection point between these two graphs right here. And all we have to do is find the y coordinate of the intersection. So how are we gonna find it? We're gonna first find out what X is and find out what Y is. So using the same concept, if it's at the intersection, the Y's are going to be the same, which allows us to set the equation equal to each other. X plus two is equal to minus two X minus one. We know that three X is equal to minus three, X is equal to minus one. So now that we found X, we simply plug this in back into either of these equations and we can find out what Y is. So the Y coordinate is going to be one. The point of intersection is located at minus one, positive one which means our answer is going to be choice D. And some of you guys that have seen my systems of equations video, which I'm gonna link in and comment down below, you know that, oh, we don't have to use setting equal to each other to find out the Y value. You probably recognize that there is a faster way to solve this question than setting them equal to each other. And that is by using elimination. I know there are multiple ways to solve a math question. I just did this for demonstration purposes, but it's good to know multiple ways to solve a single question. Because when numbers get complicated and there's decimals involved, elimination is gonna be really tough to use. If you are looking for intersection, recognize that there's the same X and Y, which allows you to set the equations equal to each other to find out what the X coordinate is. And once you got the X, you can plug it in and then find out what your Y coordinate is. And this was a very quick summary of what you need to know. But if you're studying for the SAT, guys, you want to at bare minimum have at least this level of understanding, not just for lines, but every single 25 concepts that are tested on the SAT. And in the accelerator program, we go above and beyond in doing that. So you can check it out in the pinned comment down below. If you guys got these concepts down, let's do some hard questions. So I'll see you in this video next.